Hey, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Alexander, and I'm a guitarist, composer, and overall music nerd from Copenhagen, Denmark. And today we are building a modern sounding bass tone using the Line 6 Helix. In celebration of me finally getting a proper bass guitar after many, many years without one, I decided to do a bunch of bass patches, and uh, this is one of them. So in this tutorial, we're going to dive into a sort of modern sounding proggy metal clean bass tone that you can, of course, build upon to uh, make it gritty and distortion-y and uh, sort of genty, if you will. So I'm simply going to walk you through the preset and we're going to take a look at the sort of tricks I use to come up with the bass tone that, uh, in my humble opinion, sounds pretty damn awesome. Also, if you would like to support me and the channel and get something more directly in return, I sell presets at this awesome page called New Vintage Audio, and you can check it out down in the description. If you're interested in composition, lessons, music production and tutorials, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss my weekly videos. All relevant links are in the description. It's all free, so you have no excuse. Do it. Do it for glory! Okay, so let's hear what this tone sounds like in a mix, and then we'll dive into the tutorial. Alright, welcome back to Helix Edit. We've been through this uh, mill quite a few times, so you probably know the drill already. Uh, and we're just gonna walk through this uh, very simple tone. And as you can see, I have a quite uh, simple and sort of minimalistic chain going on. And I feel like that is where you get the best results, at least if you're not going for something uh, hyper complex and stuff like that. And I always uh, do this all for my, also for my guitar tones. And then I sort of uh, do all of the fine mixing within the DAW uh, to tailor to a specific sound or something like that. If you want to EQ out something very specific or you play in a certain way that produces a frequency you don't like, um, you don't have to do that in a preset, in my opinion, because it will change all the time. And you can sort of adapt to uh, avoid those uh, bump frequencies and uh, stuff like that, right? Uh, so I always try to make it very simple and do some sort of general moves that makes my sort of overall playing sound good. Uh, and, that, and as you know, with my guitar tones and stuff like that, I always leave, leave some room for some dynamics, so it's not always uh, hyper-compressed and stuff like that, because I, liked, I play fairly hard, and I like to dig in and get a different sound out of doing that than playing softly. And I do all of these same approaches to, um, to my bass presets, right? And uh, as custom, uh, <laughs> this preset is made on my fairly new uh, Tokai... Uh, Five string jazz bass, so it's a fairly low picker, uh, fairly low output uh, with single coil pickups. So if you have one of those uh, super modern uh, humbucker basses and stuff like that, you may want to uh, start out by going to the uh, multi output here and turn the the level down because I have it at plus 12 dB, which is uh, fairly crazy. Um, but then I don't have to uh, to put my master so high. I have it uh, around 12 o'clock. I can see. Uh, and that that works for me. And I'm never gonna or never say never, but I'm I'm not in the uh, the next little while gonna use this bass for any live uh, stuff or band rehearsals or stuff like that. It's only for studio stuff and videos and stuff like that, right? So that is where it sits well for me. Okay, so the sort of main beast uh, of this tone is the MPEG SVT Brit. Um, 
And as you can see the settings, the drive is slightly lower, right? 2.7, bases at 4.9, mids are at 7.0. And then we have this mid, mid frequency um, EQ thing at 800 hertz. And then the treble is at 9. And channel volume master is cranked all the way to 10. You don't have to do this. There is also a place where you can um, play around with uh, different volumes, right? If you don't... Uh, change the output, the main output. And then I have the SAC at 7.6, the HUM at 5, the Ripple at 5, and the BIOS at 7, and the BIOS X at 5. And I'm still not quite sure what all of these does. Uh, I got a comment in one of my last videos that uh, educated me a little bit, but this time around I played around with them and I don't normally do that, and I'm fairly happy with that. And then we have the cap block and we have the 8x10 MPEG SVG E, and we are using the 121 ribbon at a very close one inch. The low cut is off, and the high cut is off. Uh, and you can of course play around with that if you have a an IR. But this whole uh, the point of this whole thing is to to get as far with stock cabinets uh, as I possibly can. And I think I got a pretty decent result. So this is what it uh, sounds like uh, without anything else. <laughs> Bit of finger. Maybe some slap. So that is also a big thing for me that um, oh, I don't do this in my band, but I, I, there I go for more specific sounds. But for stuff like this, uh, where I have to be able to do tutorial videos and I have to uh, use them in mixes and stuff like that, I like to um, to sort of test out the tone using these different styles. At least for bass, playing with a, a pick, uh, I normally mostly do this for sort of very high gain uh, distortion, uh, noisy kind of stuff. Uh, and the tutorial stuff I do and the more... Uh, I should say non-metal and normal music <laughs> is is more a uh, finger style or uh, sort of the funk uh, slap approach, right? So I, I sort of wanted to cater to all of those things and I know that um, I could make it sound a lot better if I just went for, for one. But uh, I think that you can do these uh, sort of baseline uh, presets and then uh, tweak a few different things. Uh, for example, for distortion, as we're going to talk about uh, in a minute, you can see a simple move I do to make transform the tone to a whole different thing and then uh, get that sort of a niche sound that we're going for, right? But I like to have these sort of broad presets and this is definitely one of those. Okay, so uh, one of the first moves that we do is we put on the, uh, the room reverb and this is uh, just to get that sort of uh, amp in the room kind of sound, right? And it's a very subtle uh, reverb. It's more of a thing that you feel than you hear, uh, at least in my opinion. And this is, of course, uh, the Nick Hill trick, right? I tweaked it a little bit uh, because it didn't quite work as well um, on bass as it did on guitar. And I put, I have this on all of my guitar presets because it's just, it just works, right? Um, and then we have a compressor in front of the amp. Oh, I should say we have the noise gate on as well, of course, uh, because this these single coils, it's a little old, uh, the space, I think, and uh, the single coils are a little noisy. So I have it at uh, minus 50 dB, and then it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, and then we have a compressor right in front of the amp, and it's the Deluxe, Deluxe compressor, and it's uh, a little over the top. Uh, I said in the beginning that it wasn't over compressed, but uh, it is a little bit, but uh, it sounds good. Minus uh, 31 dB, 20 to run, one ratio, right? Uh, attack at 38 milliseconds, release at 200, mix this all the way up, and level is plus 7 as well to get a little more uh, sound out, right? And without... You can hear it's almost sort of dead, right? And put it on again. Especially on that uh, low string, the B string, it makes a really huge difference in the low end. And it works great for sort of slap stuff as well, right? So 
so you get that sort of nice, consistent, and really snappy sound, right? Okay, so the main sort of, um, other than the amp, of course, the main sort of thing here is the uh, Obsidian 7000 drive pedal, which is, of course, a dark glass uh, emulation. And I think every uh, bassist out there uses this. Uh, it is sort of the uh, Tube Screamer uh, equivalent in the bass world, uh, and it sounds super great. You can hear it really, uh, it really changes the sound, right? So we take it off. We are somewhere, this could actually be used for maybe some more chill genres, maybe a jazz sort of sound, but uh, with this. Get that nice rock uh, bass sound, right? And especially again, the low end, right? And I think in uh, when we go to the distortion preset, this is basically the only thing that I mess with to uh, to get a whole another sort of gritty tone, right? Uh, and then the last thing I do is I have a simple EQ after the cabinet, um, and this is simply to clear up some of the the little muddy things and the little annoying uh, things, sort of a broad EQ, right? So uh, let's just play without first. <laughs> Like that and with so it sounds like we're taking off a blanket right and again uh, it's this sort of uh, string chime trick right so we get so we get a little more clank out of the strings right sounds really good uh, and i forgot to run through the settings on the uh, obsidian here drive at uh, 3.7 level at 4.5 blend is all the way up and it's on the boost and uh, the attack is on the flat Master is all the way up at 10, bass is at 6.5 dB, and then we have the uh, low mid frequency at 250, and at minus uh, 3.9. The high mid frequency is at uh, 1.5k, and the high mids are boosted by uh, 6 dB, and the treble at 3 dB, and then we have the distortion off. Uh, and the simple EQ, very similar to what I do in my uh, guitar sort of tones, uh, minus 2 dB in the low gain, 680 Hz in the mid frequency, then boosted by 2 dB, and the high gain is boosted by 0 0.2 dB. You, you won't be able to tell the difference, right? Uh, <laughs> so now we have the entire tone, sounds like this. Really nice functions on all the strings, tightens up the low end and stuff, and we do the finger picking text test. Right? And the slap test. Sounds really good to me. Okay, so as promised, I wanted to show how you can make this uh, a more uh, middle and more sort of uh, high gain tone, right? And all we do is, uh, or all I do is, I switch my preset here. And this is, uh, it's basically the same preset, right? You can see we have the same amp and it's almost the same settings, right? We boosted the drive a little bit and the treble a little bit. The cab is the same, right? With same mic. The EQ is exactly the same. The room is exactly the same. The comp is changed a little bit from, uh, it was around 30 something, right? It's uh, all the way up at 18 now, but instead of uh, having 20 to one, we have six to one ratio, right? Uh, or else everything is the same, but, uh, and the output is uh, lowered a bit to uh, only plus eight dB instead of 12, and the noise gate is exactly the same, right? But here is where the sort of main difference is uh, we have the drive at 7.7, .7, we have the level at 7, we have the blend at 10 still. We are now in the uh, grunt section, we are at boost, and attack we are in boost as well. Master still at 10, bass is plus 6, 250Hz, minus 3.9, same as before, right? 1.5k, uh, high mids boosted by 6, and tripled by 3, same as before, and the distortion is now on, right? And now we get <laughs> this. <laughs> Right. 
Right, so as I mentioned in the beginning, this is very uh, geared towards a specific niche niche thing. So I would never uh, play this uh, with my fingers or attempt to slap it because you get so much uh, string noise when you sort of uh, grind up uh, against the strings. And I tend to do that a lot when I'm uh, playing slap bass. So this is definitely uh, meant for uh, my own band's sort of sound This uh, with these big open parts, right? With a lot of grit and a lot of distortion. Um, and it works great for that. And uh, all I basically did I changed some minor things, and that is that is very minor things. But mostly, I uh, basically just switched on the distortion, right, and uh, changed a bit of parameters to to push it a little bit harder, right. And that is sort of the uh, the overall lesson here that you don't need to um, to reinvent yourself every time you you want a preset that sounds a little different. You can build upon that sort of main uh, base fundamental preset that you have that you like and that uh, tailors to how you play and make you feel comfortable. And that is uh, a big thing, at least for me, to not fight against the instrument. And it's uh, mostly a compressor thing, right? Uh, avoiding that poppy uh, click sound compressors can have when you do it too much, but not uh, fight against the instrument and feel like, oh, I have to play really hard and it's hard to play legato stuff and stuff like that, because mainly I have really small hands and on bass, uh, I struggled a lot if I... Um, if I don't have my settings correct. Uh, and I know if I build it off my main sort of fundamental preset and then change around these sort of more effect uh, kind of things, I can get whichever sound I like. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I, as always, enjoy doing these uh, Helix tutorial videos. They're very fun and I enjoy tinkering around in the Helix native and stuff like that and come up with cool tones. And it seems you guys are joining as well. It is easily my most popular videos. So hit me up in the comments and let me know which sort of tone I should dive into next. And as always, feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the video and maybe share it with a friend who would also benefit from this kind of tutorial. So that is all for this time, guys. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate all the kind feedback that I get in return. So stay safe out there. Promise me that. Until next time.